Neil Nicholson from Blue Marble, welcome to Space Tech Expo 2019. Good to have you here. It's good to be here. An exciting show so far, and for you guys as well, obviously. I want to talk to you about space systems in particular, and, and looking at the new technologies. I mean, there's lots of new space organizations that have come in over the last few years. Some are starting to now mature within the industry. Crystal ball out for me, Neil. What's the uh, space system manufacturing industry going to look like in 10 years? I think the best uh, comparison would be similar to what uh, cellular communications was back in the 80s, where at the very beginning, very few people could do it. The equipment was big and bulky and expensive. And then once it kind of got commoditized and commercialized, um, you know, the industry expanded, a lot more options available in electronics, costs went down, and it became, uh, you know, everybody could get in and, and play in the market. And I think, you know, that's what we're looking at over the next few years in the space industry. What are the main challenges and opportunities for commercial space? I think the biggest challenge that uh, we're getting over right now is uh, traditionally in space, you know, things were, you know, one satellite and one product of each box on each satellite. So it was very expensive. You know, an average price of a box was about a million dollars and a couple million dollars for the programmatics to get it there. Um, but for the volumes that they're talking about in these mega constellations and other, uh, you know, smaller constellations, uh, you need to be able to do at high volume and at low cost. Now, the people who know how to do high volume, low cost aren't generally familiar with radiation tolerance, surviving launch vehicles, et cetera. So, you know, and that's one of the things that Blue Marble is intended to do is to bridge that gap, bring volume manufacturing with high rel reliability with space tolerant components. So more and more people will be entering in that and then that will foster and help grow that industry. And as that industry grows, of course, there's a, there's a large amount of collaboration involved in that as well, isn't it? Yeah, there is. You know, you need to collaborate, you need to cooperate. There's some key partnerships that need to go uh, together. And at the same time, you're kind of holding back because you don't want them having your secret sauce and generating your own competitors someday. So the future of space then, what excites you and why? I think, well, the most thing that excites me the most is actually, you know, getting that global connectivity to people. You know, let's share with everybody in the world and the, you know, unconnected, underprivileged areas. There's some brilliant, you know, kids out there. If we can get them information they need, getting people more comfortable with each other, I think it'll be a better global community. Um, the other thing that I think is really nice is on the scientific end of things. And not just the space, space exploration, but there's a lot of science that goes on in space that is applicable back here, you know, trash early. So by, you know, being able to make that economical, be being able to deal with so much better bandwidths and data rates and memory and stuff like that, I think it's, it's really kind of a new technology, you know, advancement in itself. Neil, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.